Hello y'all, this is 8 Years War Resistance, a mod for Hardspine 4 that focuses on East Asia and Southeast Asia. This is an updated version as of recording, the original mod hasn't been updated since January 2020. We're going to play the 1936 bookmark, Two Suns in the Sky, tension is rising, many officers in the Japanese military are advocating expansionism, and over in China, Chiang Kai-shek believes that all of it must be pacified before dealing with foreign threats, but many figureheads disagree point out that stopping Japan's aggression is more important. The future of the Far East remains uncertain. We're going to play as the Indo-Chinese Union, a colony of France that would today be part of Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and China. It aided France in World War I, but has dealt with independentist movements which culminated with the failed Yin Bai mutiny in 1930. The situation has stabilized for now. Welcome event, it tells us some tips such as look over the starting national spirits, check decisions often, and read the tool tips. The country starts off being led by Rene Robin, who is part of the colonial administration, and our national spirits are colonial government, locals in the army, economic crisis, illiterate population, no proper equipment design, repression, and opium profit. So we have a lot of things we gotta settle up and fix cause we got a lot of debuffs and very little buffs that are helping the country in its own way. Checking out the army, we have just three divisions and all of them are infantry. We do have a navy that consists of one heavy cruiser, one light cruiser, and two submarines. For the army commanders, we have two generals, which is perfectly fine considering our initial size. Browsing through the naval commanders, we have three admirals, which is more than enough for what we begin with. In the decisions tab, using political power when we have the chance, let's get a government bailout to try and stop economic instability. Starting the focus tree, let's begin with contract a new colonial loan which will reduce inflation. Looking at military tech, we have 18-year-old guns, World War I era tanks, but we do have 1934 artillery and 1933 aircraft. One feature this mod has is renaming non-aligned ideology to reactionary and adding a new one to the system called socialism. Some war is going on up in China and the February 26th incident took place which was a failed coup but did manage to kill several politicians. In response, the emperor harshly cracked down on the rebels and the rebellion imploded without the support of the emperor. Strikes, we are dealing with them and the widespread strikes national spirit is not pretty at all. Making our way down the focus tree, let's start great hydraulic works then increase opium monopolies then reduce illiteracy. A new governor general is appointed, so we get a new leader, basically unpopular Rene Robin's successor is Jules Breve, former governor of French West Africa. Here is his portrait, and we get a nice little description explaining his background. Something to point out to the right of where the military experience is, we have supply condition, which represents the general supply situation of our military, which is affected by a number of different things, such as stability and mobilization, and in turn, the supply condition will affect our war support. Another thing I saw is some interesting neighbors nearby us, starting with British North Borneo, the Kingdom of Sarawak, and the Federated Malay States. And all of these are puppets of the United Kingdom, so they're in the Allies. There is one more in this group in the form of the Strait Settlements, whose capital is Singapore. The Xi'an incident has occurred. Two Kuomintang generals were able to imprison Chiang Kai-shek. An agreement was reached and he was released, but instead of focusing on nearby threats now, this agreement will have all Chinese parties form a united front to confront any invaders pushing into China. Since Rene Robin isn't country leader anymore and we have widespread strikes, we can begin another part of the focus tree starting with colonial reforms. The Spanish Civil War came and went, the Republicans won, and the Nationalists lost. The provisional government of the Republic of China, after a large amount of cooperation, we are ready to put control of the Republic of China into the hands of a local government. We can say yes or no, sure, let's go with the first option they have our blessing. Checking in on the affairs in Europe, our overlord France has gone communist, so they are called the French Commune now. Jiang Kai-shek makes the Lushan Declaration. He makes a strong case for there will be no more forbearance to Japanese military provocation and the Marco Polo Bridge incident happen, so war seems just around the corner. There's the conflict. The Republic of China and Japan are fighting one another. Both nations will be aided by their allies. The Mongol United Autonomous Government is established. This could be the start of Myeongjong. Just looking at the occupied territories out of curiosity, we could release four different nations, Cambodia, Chimpe-Sac, 
Black, which is a Lotion Kingdom, the Kingdom of Luang Prabang, and Vietnam if we wanted to. As the Japanese advance into China, they established the provisional government of the ROC, led by Wang Kamin. Myungjong, also known as Min Koko, is established. The Japanese created another puppet in the form of the Great Way government in Shanghai. Historically, it lasted less than a year, so let's see how it does here. We complete the focus, finish the Trans Indo Chinese. This unlocks the decision to build the Trans Indo Chinese Railway, which will improve our infrastructure greatly. The Nation Francais declared war on the French Commune. We have a French Civil War going down. It's the Fascist versus the Communist. Technically, we're on the side of the Communist. But are really too far away to really do anything, so they're on their own for the most part. It's 1938 and the United Kingdom declared war on Japan. Japan is still fighting in China, and now they gotta battle the entire Allies faction. The odds don't look too good for the French Communist government. It looks like the fascists are winning in North Africa. They have Algiers and they're pushing into Tunisia. Austria gets Angelus, we industrialize, and then we'll exploit natural resources, pay back the colonial loan, and support the French war effort if the commune isn't dead by the time we get to it. Xinjiang declared war on Tunganistan. Nation Francois won the civil war, so the fascists are in power, and and the French Commune joins the Comintern a little too late, don't you think? The Civil War's outcome puts us in an awkward scenario. The colonial administration is still in power, but we're no longer a subject state of France, so we have become unintentionally independent. Xinjiang declared war on Kumul, and while we're here, I'll say that the Great Way government has died. Military intelligence was strengthened now. We're increasing military spending. Then we'll translate some textbooks, expand Hanoi University, and build French indigenous schools. Looking at a Japanese puppet, they're just being tormented because there's just so much communist partisan activity going on in northern China. Our Navy had a training exercise that started with two submarines and a cruiser, and it ended with one submarine and a cruiser, unfortunately. Because of the powers that be, Georges Coutreau is appointed as the Governor General of Indochina, becoming our new leader. There he is, and like his predecessor, there is a little description explaining his story and background. Xinjiang declared war on itself. On one side, we have the East Turkestan's People's Republic, who is communist, while on the other side, Xinjiang is reactionary. Since he will be our last leader, let's talk about George Coutreau historically. After the fall of France, he didn't side with the Vichy government and instead joined de Gaulle, who was the leader of the Free France Movement. He was appointed High Commissioner to the Levant in 1941, then he was appointed to Governor General of Algeria in 1943. He later became Minister for North Africa, and at some point was an ambassador to the USSR through 1945 to 1948. Checking in on Nation Francois, they joined the Axis, which besides Germany and Italy includes legionary Romania, Hungary, and Bessarabia. The Indo-Chinese Union situation has changed a bit since the game start, going from a colony to freedom. We can basically do whatever we want now while observing the situation in East Asia. The video is going to end here. If you enjoyed the mod, make sure to check it out in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment. Have an awesome day. I'll see y'all later.